Okay, we started with uh, three expressions. We want to find the zeros. What does that mean? We want to find where y is zero, okay? So what we're going to do, start with the first equation. And we set that equal to zero. That's what we mean by find the zeros. Okay. If right up to two things is zero, then one of those things has to be zero. So this means that 2x plus 12 equals zero. That's 2x minus 12, sorry. Or x squared plus 9x plus 18 equals zero. Well, 2x minus 12 equals zero as solution. 2x equals 12, x equals 12 over 2, x equals 6. And clearly, if x equals 6, 2 times x is 12, and 12 minus 12 is 0, so that checks out. <laughs> now this, you can try to get all your x's in one. You've got x squareds and you got x's, and it's not going to work. And at that point, you should hopefully realize that this is a quadratic equation. And it can be solved maybe by factoring. And if you can't solve it by factoring, you can always use the quadratic formula. Okay, well, I'm going to solve it by factoring, uh, but I'll tell you on this equation and this equation, we're going to have to use a quadratic formula. Okay. Uh, so this is quadratic. Equation. Use a quadratic formula for factoring. Well, it turns out this factors into x plus 6 times x plus 3 equals 0, which means that x plus 6 is 0, or x plus 3 is 0. So that x equals negative 6, or x equals negative 3. So now the zeros are x equals 6, x equals negative 6, x equals negative 3. Okay, so. That's the first equation. Now, each of these equations is going to break into two equations. And one of those equations is quadratic, the other is going to be linear. So let's see you solve it. Okay, now people seem to be doing pretty well with the second one as far as uh, breaking it down into two equations. But uh, people don't seem to remember the quadratic formula. And you need to review that and you need to get that into your head. Um, and if you do the upcoming assignments the way they need to be done, uh, that should happen. Okay, so you have 3x minus 9 multiplied by. 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 equals 0. At the very first, don't dive into solving the linear equation before you split these the solution into two equations. Okay? going to be this or this. Don't leave that or word out of there. I keep writing that thing. And, you know, I'm, my hand's getting all tired of writing it. Nobody's writing it. My hand's getting tired for no good reason. Now, seriously, there's a good reason I want you to write or there. I want you to ponder what that means. And if you're not writing it down, you're not thinking about it. Okay? It's important. There's something important to be understood. 
on that one. Um, okay, so you know, write it down the way I tell you to write it down. I have reasons for it. Okay, 3x minus 9 equals 0. Well, 3x minus 9 plus 9 equals 0 plus 9. 3x equals 9. So 3x divided by 3 equals 9 divided by 3. So that x equals 3. So there's one solution, and that solution comes out very quickly. How do you solve a quadratic equation? You can try to factor it, but you know, it's, I wouldn't bother trying to factor that. Okay. Even though I, you know, I'm I've done a few recently. I'm pretty quick at being able to do it. Um, <coughs> it really has a look of something that's not going to factor. <coughs> so, immediately just go to the quadratic formula. Okay. And we didn't do that over here because this one's pretty easy to factor. And if you're halfway you know, conversant with factoring, uh, that, that's very good. But this one isn't going to factor. Okay. So we're going to put it up with negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 32 is going to be plus 32 in the portion. And that's going to be over 2 times 2, which is negative 7 over 4, plus or minus the square root of, now make sure I did my arithmetic right, 4 times 2 is 8 times 4 is 32, yeah. And we add that up and we get 81. Oh, no. Oh, God, that did pack, but yeah. I'd better be wrong. How about that? I thought that was going to factor, you know how, but it turns out that it actually does still. It would be hard to find the factor. Okay. So, coincidentally, we get the square root of 81 here, which is a perfect square. 81 is a perfect square. We get negative 7 fourths plus or minus 9 fourths. Force negative seven force minus nine force is negative sixteen force. That's negative four. Four negative seven force plus nine force is two force, which is one half. And just to check that out, we get negative 4, we get 32 here, we get minus 28, minus 4, and minus 4. And here we've got uh, 1 half and 7 halves, which is 8 halves, which is 4, and 4 minus 4 is 0. So I wasn't trying to come up with a quadratic that would solve exactly, but there it is, so that can happen. Okay, so that kind of surprised me, it's kind of random terms, uh, but that's okay. All right, now try the third one. You're again going to need to use the quadratic formula. Okay. Okay, so we have this last one. Four X plus multiply by X squared plus two X plus five equals zero. This tells us that four X plus 20 equals zero or X squared plus 2x plus 5 equals 0. Now, if you solve this, you get x equals negative 5 
subtract 20 from both sides and then divide by four. Or x equals negative two plus or minus the square root of four minus 20 divided by two. <coughs> so that equals negative two over two plus or minus the square root of negative 16 over two. Okay, well, what's the square root of negative 17? It's not four and negative 16. Four squared is 16, not negative 16. Matter of fact, there's nothing at all you can square to get a negative. So the square root of negative 16 is not a real number. Well, negative two over two is negative one. And I could write the square root of 16 square root of negative 16 as the square root of 16 times the square root of negative one. Negative 16 times negative one is negative 16. And this equals negative one plus or minus two times the square root of negative one. Now this is not going to give you a zero on a graph of this thing because the graph only has real number zeros, okay? This is an imaginary number. Right of two here, so I'm going to write a two. <coughs> equals the square root of negative one. Okay. And I stands for imaginary. You might wonder why imaginary numbers are important. Um, well, it turns out that the most successful theory we have to explain everything universe, everything we see around us, every physics experiment we can do uh, is, is quantum mechanics. And you can't have quantum mechanics unless you have imaginary numbers. So imaginary numbers are very real in a very real sense. It's just we kind of have trouble understanding them in the same way we understand numbers like negative five. You can't write them on a number line. Now, my field in graduate school, and I, I went fairly deep into it, uh, this theory is a function of complex variables, okay? So I, I have some appreciation for how deep it can go, uh, but I never got to the point where I could really uh, uh, do the quantum mechanics. I was in mathematics, not physics. Um, there's a huge amount of theory, a uh, huge amount of research going on in the whole field. Um, so it's a big deal, but right now for our purposes, <coughs> it's a way of talking about the solutions of these equations. Um, so that, okay, our solutions are, Negative five is a solution. Negative one minus two i is a solution. And negative one plus two i is a solution. Okay. Three solutions to this equation. Now, 
Any polynomial factors in the product of linear and irreducible quadratic factors. An irreducible quadratic factor is one that only has imaginary zeros. A linear factor has the form AX plus B which is easily set equal to zero and solve an irreducible quadratic factor. <laughs> This is the form AX squared plus BX plus C. With B squared minus 4AC. Less than zero. B squared minus 4AC is what goes here. And if it's less than zero, it's going to be negative. So you're going to have to factor out the negative one and get a, an I. Okay. I just want to put letters on the form and don't have a great set of so letters to use. So I'm going to revert to Greek symbols. <laughs> This is a Greek alpha and a Greek beta. It's an alpha plus beta I. Okay. It's got that imaginary, some multiple of the imaginary number. It's called a complex number. I'll let you read that terminology in your materials. You'll see plenty of it in your open map homework. <coughs> Irreducible quadratic factors don't give you x intercepts. Okay.
Real zeros come from linear factors, one for each linear factor. The complex zeros come in pairs, alpha plus or minus theta i. <laughs> And these come from irreducible quadratic factors. If I give you polynomial. Is a polynomial. If x equals one, this thing is going to be zero. You can test that. Let x equal one. You're going to get one plus six minus nine plus two. One and six and two add up to nine, and then minus nine gives you zero. It follows that p of x is divisible by x minus 1. <coughs> so I'll do that long division. I'm going to do it without. A lot of comments. <laughs> Something is haywire here. It's probably having to do. Oh, it's minus two x plus two. Okay, it's not haywire anymore. That should be a minus two. Okay. Now, by this long division, Break down and send some more boards. I'm 
got that works out. Okay, what I get from this. P of x is x minus one times x squared plus seven x minus two. Okay, so here we have a linear factor. And here we have a quadratic factor. Question is, is this thing irreducible? Well, x squared plus seven x minus two has solutions x equals negative seven plus or minus the square root of seven squared plus eight over two. Where I've skipped some details, negative seven halves plus or minus the square root of 57. <clears throat> okay, these are real solutions. So the quadratic factor was reducible. It turns out that x squared of seven x minus two equals x minus negative seven halves plus square root of fifty seven times x minus. <laughs> Um, you know, I wrote down my square root of 57. I didn't write my two. Uh, that needs to be there. Okay. So left out the two there. I just wasn't paying attention. But now I can write this x squared plus 7x minus 2 has. A product of two linear factors. This is just x minus something. This is x minus something else. These are both linear factors. So that <coughs> this original polynomial original polynomial P of X equals X cubed plus six X squared minus 9x plus 2 can be written 
product of trace greater factors P of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 9x minus 2 equals x minus 1 times x minus negative 7 halves plus the square root of 57 over 2. And that's a perfectly good number there. It's just one that looks a little longer than just a, a single decimal number. And we can't write this accurately as a decimal number because the square root of 57 has an infinite number of decimal places. You can try to write it out in decimal form. Seems that maybe I wasn't recording uh, when I did a lot of that. So let's just go back over. This example. And my example starts. Okay, so my example starts here. Uh, I made the comment that real zeros come from linear factors. Complex zeros come in pairs of the form alpha plus or minus beta i from irreducible quadratic factors. Just to make sure we understand where all that came from, we go back to our um, original equation here. Okay. This Setting this equation equal to zero, we get 4x plus 20 equals zero, or x squared plus 2x plus 5 equals zero. We solve this very quickly and easily. Uh, we get x equals negative 5. Over here, we have to use the quadratic formula. And when we do, it turns out that the way these numbers are, we get a negative under our radical. Well. There's no real number that we can square and get a negative. If we square a negative number, we get a positive. If we square a positive number, we get a positive. <coughs> so the square root of negative 17 isn't a real number. And it's not going to give us a zero on a graph of this function. It's still going to give us information, uh, but maybe more information than we can really use the level of this course, the scope of this course. Uh, still, it's going to give us some important insight into the structure of polynomials. Okay, so when I end up with something like this, I factor out a negative 1. So the square root of negative 16 is the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1. And the square root of negative 1 is a number that we're going to call i. It's an imaginary number. I think my imaginary numbers are just figments of our imagination. I think I commented when I originally did this, and forgive me if you're hearing this twice. Um, but um, the most explanatory function we or the theory of physics, uh, the one that explains pretty much everything we can observe, is quantum mechanics, and it turns out. You fundamentally can't have quantum mechanics without imaginary numbers. So you can't have reality without imaginary numbers. Okay. Uh, kind of comes down to that. It's, it's, it's very deep and profound. And I can kind of explain that, but not totally, uh, in a way that would satisfy physics anyway. Um, okay. Yeah, you know, these guys are important. Okay, my engineers know that now. Okay, my engineering students know that. They learned that 
<laughs> or secondary of engineering, where you just can't solve certain problems unless you can use complex numbers. Um, and then problems with real solutions, you know, real uh, power systems and engine, you know, all, all kinds of things. Okay. Um, modern civilization would not be what it is, for better or worse, um, without the development of complex numbers back in the 1800s. Okay. Um, and the well, man, not going into detail. Okay, so bottom line, once we uh, factor out this square root of negative one and do a little simplification, we get negative one plus or minus two i, where i stands for the square root of negative one, imaginary number. <laughs> we call this a complex number. It's got a real number and then plus or minus some imaginary part. Okay. So our solution set to this equation is this. And I made the statement, a polynomial at all. Now, factors into product of linear and irreducible quadratic factors. Okay. What do I mean by that? Uh, well, a linear factor is like an AX plus B. 4x plus 20 is a linear factor. Okay? X squared plus 2x plus 5 is a linear as a quadratic factor. And it's irreducible because it doesn't have real solutions. That, in other words, setting a complex number equal to zero doesn't have real solutions. And we'll see in a minute why that's we call that irreducible. Um so Linear factors, just their form AX plus B, you set it equal to zero, subtract B from both sides, divide both sides by A. <laughs> you very easily get a solution every time. An irreducible quadratic factor is an AX squared plus BX plus C, where this discriminant, the B squared minus 4AC, the thing that gave us the negative 16 here, is less than zero. So it gave us less than zero. We had to factor out the negative one and we get the I. Solution in this case, because we have a plus or minus that square root of B squared minus 4AC, we can write it as some number that I'll call L, and that's the first letter of the Greek alphabet. You can kind of see how it's related to A, and this is pretty clearly related to B, okay? But it's alpha and beta. Since I've already used A and B in the standard notation for quadratic uh, equations, quadratic functions. Okay, so it's some alpha plus or minus beta i. It's always a plus or minus because you always have a plus or minus here. So they always come in pairs. So solutions of the irreducible quadratics come in pairs. And we see we have a pair here of this and this. This makes a pair. Negative one minus two i, negative one plus two i. Always looks like that. Okay. Now, real zeros come from linear factors. Complex zeros come in pairs of this form, a plus or minus b i from irreducible quadratic factors. And we did this example. This P of x function there, beta, I just contrived it very easily. So that it would be zero when x equals one. <coughs> you plug x equals one in here, you get one plus six minus nine plus two. That adds up to zero. You can check it out yourself. This means I can divide this polynomial by x minus one. Since it's zero when x equals one, it's divisible by x minus one. If I do the long division, here's what I get. I get x minus one and x squared plus seven x minus two. And our conclusion is uh, our p of x that I wrote here can be written this way. 
the x minus 1 is a linear factor. That's the factor that gave us the 1, the solution 1. Okay, the, the 0 at x equals 1. This is a quadratic factor, and it's up in the air at this time whether this is irreducible or not. It could be irreducible. It could not be irreducible. Well, it turns out that it's reducible. Why? We know it's reducible because we can solve the equation. We can set this equal to zero. If it was reducible, that means it would be reduced to two linear factors. It couldn't be reduced to two linear factors. If it reduces to two linear factors, then we can get two zeros out of it. Okay. So, anyhow, we set this equal to zero and we write out the solutions. And it has two solutions, negative seven halves plus square root of 57 over two, negative seven halves minus square root of 57 over two. These are two real solutions. So it was reducible. Matter of fact, I know what it reduced to. I know that I can now factor this thing, but you would never come up with the factors without the quadratic formula, because they're not whole numbers, they're not fractions even, they're irrational numbers, okay? We have, that means that this is equal to this minus this solution, and this solution is the one we get for the plus here, times this minus the solution we get for the minus, okay? So this quadratic is equal to this, times this. These are both linear factors, but the <laughs> linear factors we can find using our standard techniques of factoring. <clears throat> okay, well, that's kind of a, a profound thing to understand. If you understand that, great. Um, so again, we write out our conclusion that this polynomial that I started with, by everything that we did, can be written as a product of three linear factors. P of x equals this polynomial equals x minus one, which is here, times x minus this solution of the quadratic times x minus this solution of the quadratic. That's three linear factors. Okay, now I'm gonna do another example. <coughs> okay, now, I think P of negative five is zero. Check it out. I do X plus five, which is X minus negative five. And divide that into four X cubed plus 28 x squared plus 60x plus 100. Now I'm getting pretty close to the bottom of the board here. I hope I can do it. Squeeze all this in. We're going to get 4x cubed plus 20x squared. When I subtract here, again, I'm not going into a lot of explanation because we did that last time. I have 8x squared plus 60x. I'm going to need an 8x. So it's going to give me 8x squared plus 40x. Subtracting, I get 20x plus 100, and I think it works out. And I have plus 20, and 20 times x plus 5 is 20x plus 100. And that checks out. Okay. Now, um, I do have a problem with board space, so let me handle that for a minute. Okay. Now, from this, we see that P 
of x, which is 4x cubed plus 28x squared plus 60x plus 100 equals x plus 5 times x squared 4x squared plus 8x plus 20. Okay, so here's a linear factor. Which we found, I say by inspection. So I play around with numbers, I find that if x is negative 5, this all gives me 0. So I've got a linear factor here, x plus 5. This quadratic factor. Is it reducible? Well, x plus 5 equals 0 gives us x equals negative 5. 4x squared plus 8x plus 20 equals 0 gives us x equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 80 over 2 times 4, which equals negative 1 plus or minus well, I detail, square root of negative 16 over 8. What I end up with is negative one plus or minus i over two. Okay, complex elements of use of terminology, it's just called complex conjugate. Solutions from the irreducible Quadratic factor. So we've shown that this part of the mill factors into a linear factor and an irreducible quadratic factor. <coughs> What do we now know about the graph of this function? Well, what do we know about the board space? I really have time for the board to go out and clean some more. Um, oh. I just need to. Write a little more, so I'm going to have to clean a board. This function by the solutions that we got over here has three zeros. It x equals one, x equals negative seven has plus the square root of fifty-seven over two. X equals negative seven has minus the square root of fifty-seven over two. It's down over here. It's up over here by all the theory that we've got, and the graph looks. Pretty much like this. Okay. And the point is, it's got two wiggles because it's got three zeros. This other function
that I'm not writing out real well, but it's the one we did here. Has a much simpler graph. First of all, if y intercept is 100, and it's got only one zero, it x equals negative five. It's vertex, well, it's down over here, it's up over here, and maybe it has a wiggle in here someplace, and maybe it just kind of does this and then goes on, okay? And that would be like, this graph that has only one real zero. So it's kind of like a cubing function. It does tend to maybe level out a little bit at some point. And without using calculus, it's difficult to determine what this point would be, but um, that's the way the function behaves. <coughs> Morning. Okay. Have a great break. Get the test done by. Five o'clock on that Monday. Okay.
Okay, here's a paraboloid. And we have the cylinder R equals four. This is in polar coordinates or cylindrical coordinates, okay? Uh, this is not in cylindrical coordinates, but it can be written that way. Uh, but we understand that this is circle R equals four all the way up, all the way down. That's a cylinder. It's an infinite cylinder. We want the part of the cylinder is bounded below by the xy time and above by this paraboloid. And we want to describe that by inequalities in rectangular coordinates and in cylindrical coordinates. And we might even decide to do it in spherical coordinates, but that's a little more involved. And we wouldn't ordinarily do that, so we might not. Okay, so describe the quality and the value of and Go ahead and work on that for a minute, then we see what you got and see what no can happen.
Okay. Yeah, and there. Need to need need to see until people come here. 